Welcome to the Love Lessons Podcast, where we talk about love and relationships. So today I have a guest. I'm really excited about my guest. So this particular guest is hailing from Atlanta. Kendra Crump is an upcoming comedian, up and coming comedian. She's currently attending Clark Atlanta University, obtaining her bachelor's degree in mass communication with a concentration in radio, TV, and film. So she is inviting us into her life because she is going to share some things with us. We are going to hear some things. So I'm really excited. So welcome to the show, Kendra. Hello, yes. Welcome for for having me. First off, thank you for not thinking I was a box. Thank you for not throwing me away to win. You know, honey, I mean, I I literally have to have jump through hoops and sometimes get on some people's podcast. I'm like, look, come on now, y'all. Y'all blocking your own (laughs) website. I received that. Okay. <laughs> I need at least 10 points. Okay. Just putting yeah, that out there. A hundred points. That would be nice. That would put me in a nice spot. So, okay, okay. so I love it that you think big because that brings me to the topic. I was looking through your Instagram and I noticed that you talked about fake ballers and the topic today is high quality versus high value men. So I definitely wanted to hear more about how you came up with this whole fake baller um, joke. Got it. So um, I'm going to say this. Um, I realized that it's, it's a lot of guys that I come across, you know, who, who just they like putting on a show. Um, whether it be, because I, you know, noticed that, I don't know, I guess, I don't know when it became cool to start, you know, showcasing your money, you know, the drugs and whatever, alcohol. Like, I don't know, when, when did that actually become cool? Because I've always thought that, you know, real G's was in silence. That's what, that's what mm-hmm. I always thought, you know, because people who actually have money, they're, they're not going to be posting it. People who have money, like the real people who have money, you, they gonna look like like they just they shop out of Walmart. Their whole their whole closet is just full of off brand stuff. That they know that they can afford Walmart. They didn't get by Walmart, right? You know? And so the problem, the problem that I come across is when I when I come across a man who I guess will flash money to I guess show that they got something. I guess to show you know get women or so. Um, it, it just makes you just really look very arrogant, um, and and I'm like, hey, can I, you know, you gonna give me some money or something? Like, right. You know, so why are you flashing it? Yeah, and they're like, I ain't got no money for you. I'm like, you're the one flashing money. I, I, I thought you, you know, what do you, you know, because I, I was talking, I was talking to, uh, this was uh, back over the summer. I was in this getting my car window uh, tent uh, tent shop, and so. I was having a conversation with uh, this guy mm-hmm. and another person, another guy had overheard. Now, the other guy, he's young dude, he actually has like a computer, uh, I, I know I'm like butchering the word right now, but like basically a computer bag, like where you place your computer. What do you mm-hmm. call it? A like, computer bag or it's like for a laptop. It's um, yeah, a laptop. Look, look, guys, look, sometimes my ADHD kicks in. <laughs> I don't know everything. You might think I'm in this conversation, but I'm not, I promise you, my, I'm, I'm the highest rated weed in the dispensary, I promise you, but back to what I was saying, so, <laughs> so what happened was that he, he came in, all right, he was wearing all black, which I don't know what's wrong with him, because it's 95 degrees outside, why are you wearing all black, you ain't going to work, so right, what you wearing all black for, all right, all right, it was dumb as it is, uh, secondly, um, had that bag, it's Louis Vuitton, and oh, wow. A fake what? A chopper, a gun, a gun. Oh, okay. Yeah, you got to make it plain for me. I'm like, what? Okay. Well, you know what? Okay, great. This works. This works. Okay, so I'm going to put these bottoms away. Because 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 I'm going to 
whatever. So I think that was a little giddy up. Yeah. Type thing, right? So he you know, heard me. So I'm like, bro, I'm so tired. Of, I, this is all I was saying. I said, I'm so tired of running to some, some broke dude. I really am. I, I just like, you know, the most a guy has ever spent on me, you know, was buy me some ramen noodle packets. Oh, no. quality or that's what we're talking about high quality versus high value because obviously women are not wanting the fake ballers and you basically gave us signs of a fake baller that would be a whole different podcast or no <laughs> signs you are a fake baller but <laughs> we're talking about the high quality versus high value because i think that a lot of guys they'll listen trying to see what females are looking at and how we think about things. So you kind of gave us, you know, a little more background into how the situation would go and how we end up finding out that you're fake. So, but let's get into the high quality versus the high value. Cause have you been hearing about this high value man thing and all the women wanting a high value man and what a high value man is? You haven't heard of it? I haven't. Yeah, it is a thing like when it comes to like YouTube and um, when it might be just mostly on YouTube. I don't know because I'm not I'm getting into IG a little bit because I lost my Facebook 
following, but that's a whole nother story. But I'm getting into Instagram a little bit, but I saw it all over YouTube. But high uh, value is basically men that they have money, they have the looks and they have status. So they have their six figure earners, they're six foot tall, you know, or high, you know, at least six foot tall. Yes. Um, and they also have the status. So they have clout. So what people are basically saying is that all the women are wanting this um, high value man, but the women are not qualifying for this high value man. That's the whole topic that's trending or whatever. Uh, and, and I, I did a little bit of research. I did a little bit of research. Um, and, you know, and you did what you were saying as very true. I added a little bit of you know, like you can still find that type of man, but he might instead of him being over six foot tall, like he could be five foot five and have have all of that type of stuff. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know why women are so like. I used to be that type of person. Like, I used to be that type of person uh, where I was like, oh, I want a man who's a lot taller. Than I, like I'm five six. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I had an issue with my height because I was like, I want a man who's a lot shorter than me. Uh, I mean, I, I want a man who's taller me because the men who I, I had the crush on, they were short, and I always thought that that would look strange. Yeah. Date somebody who, you know, where I'm with your heels. Short, but, but mm -hmm. it's like, it shouldn't, at the end, when you, a person who's mature is going to be like, bro, like, they can literally have more to offer than, you know, they can have all of that. They're just, they're mm -hmm. high. And on top of that, the average man is, you know, six foot five. It's not about a tall man walking yes. around. Yes. Tall, tall, dark, and handsome. Yeah. Yeah. Did you put, let me ask, did you, are you tall or are you short? Are you, are you average or the same height? Yeah, we're the same height. Yeah. Okay, so did you have an issue with, like, dating some amazing? Yeah, I'm petty like that. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. It wasn't a dope. I, I tried to, like, 5'9 five, ish, 5'8 five, or whatever. It was just, like I could do it, but I was always he would have to be at least the same height when I put heels on. So that would mean he'd have to be like five nine ish. You know, I think that was the shortest. Yeah, like five nine, five eleven, like that's cool. But I mean, I got what I wanted because my husband is six four. So I got what I wanted, but I I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I wasn't going to be able to do it. But I mean, when it comes to like, you got to look at the whole picture and there is a difference between the high value. Like, I like what you were saying because it's not all about the looks or whatever. I did test myself and try to date people. I couldn't do it. <laughs> like I was not able to do it. I did try. So I had my limits or whatever. But when it comes to like high quality, I think that we're not talking about high quality as much, like who they are as a person. Like you were talking about that in your story a little bit earlier when you were talking about when you try to get to know him and he's like, I don't know, I'm just giving you nothing. So in regards to high quality, looking at their character, like you, you ask them, what does he do for money? So that would have let you in on his ambition. Like if he had any goals or anything he wanted to do. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, you know, that was ridiculous. I have never, like, I've never experienced anything like that before. Like, you got me on that one. Wow. Yeah, and with just crazy stuff. Great, great life, you know, advice to a single woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, I'm looking forward to it because we the you one thing you said about your boy is you talked about his style. So at least I mean, you said it wasn't quite right, but he did have a little bit going right. Like, I don't know. His shoes, I think he had those Balenciaga shoes are just ugly. A lot of people don't understand just because it's designer doesn't make it attractive. Mm. I, don't understand. I think people just follow that trend, and I don't understand why people are following the trend. Like, whatever happens, like, you can find. So his character was a little off because he wasn't really wanting to help you. <laughs> like he, when you asked about the charger, style was off, ambitions off. He was just off. So um, that kind of brings me to to just wrapping up what like the main topic is basically high quality versus high value. What you have to think about is. Do you want a man that is like he has the six figures, he's got the money, he got the looks, he got the status, but maybe he doesn't have the character and he might not be, he he's definitely still has style, he still has ambition, but he may not have that style and ambition that like the highest level, but when you put all of those things together, the character, the style and ambition, he's still a high quality man. Like, so we, I, what I want to reiterate is that we're not throwing as women, we're not throwing away high quality men just because a lot of women want high value. That doesn't mean that we are just oblivious to, there's a lot of high quality men out here. So I, um, I want to see, let's, let's talk about, I, I've got a story myself as far as, and maybe you can relate to it. We'll see. Um, I'm going to keep it pretty short, but let's see. Um, let's talk about that um, of when I've in, encountered a, a high value man and how that went. <laughs> I wanted to take a moment 
to tell you how excited I am to have a podcast. I finally have a podcast and that was because of Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. For one, it's free. They have creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. So it's really easy. And on top of that, it will get your podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and so many more. Many that I hadn't even heard of before Anchor. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. So you don't have to build up this huge audience first. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one spot. So what I need you to do is download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started with your own podcast. Because you have a purpose and you have a voice that someone's waiting to hear. All right. So you have reached the love story portion of the show. So you get to hear some of our experiences here. All right. So um, we're going to talk about, I know right before I have been so frustrated. I was just telling you about this, how I was just so frustrated with the dating experience like it was just so hard so (laughs) it was really really hard so i got to the point where i was like okay listen here i am whoever's listening i am only going to basically look for certain qualities in a guy if he doesn't have that then i'm just moving on i'm just over it i'm over trying to be basically, I don't know, kind of like how you were describing, like, I'm just trying to give people a chance. I was like, no, (laughs) like, I'm tired of just trying to give people a chance. If they're not, you know, what I'm looking for as far as their income level, um, I was still trying, I still was working on it when it comes to looks and stuff, because it's just not even realistic for you to expect them to be, you know, drop dead gorgeous and stuff like that. Like for me, if I'm honest, like my stomach, got stretch marks, stuff like that. Like, come on now. Like, so no, don't expect. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying like these high quality, not quality, these high value men, a lot of times um, they can get supermodel level because of the amount of money they have. So I was like, okay, you know, looking at who I am, like just being real with myself, I was like, okay, it's not saying it's not possible. Like, yeah, you could do that. You could get somebody that um is the best looking man alive yeah but um you don't want to close yourself up you know you don't want to narrow your options down to maybe five men you know (laughs) because so i didn't want to narrow it down that far but i was definitely like okay we do have to have this income thing going so i i thought about okay this is what i'm looking for he's got to be ambitious he's got to i didn't throw out the he at least had to be spiritual so um i wouldn't even say spiritual he had to believe in jesus in my particular case because i there was a (laughs) right (laughs) right he had to believe in jesus he did because there was one guy he was really nice looking he was over six foot but he didn't believe in jesus and i I just couldn't do it like he he was trying to convince me you know but i couldn't do it so i did have my deal breakers and things like this but there was one particular guy he did he had the phd and for for a while i was going for my phd as well like so he had a phd he had the six figure he had basically like he believed in god believed in jesus and you know he had all that stuff so i was like really seriously um giving him a chance but then what i noticed is that he didn't give me what i was looking for so 
Um, he opened the doors and took me out to the, you know, whatever restaurant I wanted to go to, but it was like, he would never call me. Like he would rarely call me. He would rarely check on me. Like, it was just like, what's going on? And he just was saying, well, I'm so busy. And for me, I thought it was BS. I really did at first until I really like got into his world a little bit. A little bit because we weren't like exclusive or anything like that. It was like that beginning phase. What do you call that phase? I don't know. Um, dating phase? Yeah, <laughs> that. So um, just like getting to know each other or whatever. So in that phase, um, when I started to see like what his life was really like, like he basically was always working. So that being said, it was like, I had to make a decision. Like, do I want somebody that, yes, he does have the income, but he's always working and he's not going to necessarily be checking on me and making sure I'm good and this and that. Like when we do get together, we can, you know, enjoy that time, but that's pretty much it. Like, and I have to get in where I fit in when it comes to the time. So I wasn't able to like you know how you might have free time and you want to do something fun with your man you know that kind of thing i wouldn't be able to do that with him like I, what's your what's your love language when you realize your love language was at time? It, you know what your love language was? no i knew um from back in the day it was um it's words of affirmation and i forgot what the second highest one was, was it quality time? no it was not but gift, there gift, gift giving it wasn't um it wasn't the gifts either even though i like all the things um so i'm very like i'm definitely really grateful when anybody gets me anything but that's not necessarily my love language i'm trying to think it wasn't physical touch what's the other one we went through all of them except one it's words of affirmation physical touch quality time and uh, acts of service acts of service so mine is like acts of service and words of affirmation. Those are the two, you know, higher ones. So with this particular man, how could he do anything for me? Cause he's so busy, you know what I'm saying? So, and how can he like give me a lot of words of affirmation because I barely talk to him. So it was like, he really just couldn't give me the things that I needed. I'm glad you brought up the five love languages though. Cause that was a good angle as far as, but he wasn't able to get, I mean, he could have given me gifts and that would have held me on a little longer. <laughs> like if he had to did that. <laughs> yeah, it would have helped, but I, I think I still would have been like dissatisfied. So I guess the question is what, I mean, how would, I would have liked looking back on it to have known that. I don't know if I would have ever known that, but I'm like, how would have I been able to figure that out before? Cause you know, I went through all this trouble with, cause we were in different states or whatever to try to, to connect with them and spending time with that. And I'm like, if I could have prevented it, that's one of the reasons why I have this podcast, because if I could have prevented like going through the shenanigans, then I would have, cause he was not able to give me what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. out there listening, do not meet yourself because you got to realize, listen, that's all about, that's what life is. Life, you're supposed to learn from your mistakes. Like one of my uh, favorite scriptures, not even a favorite scripture, but one that's most quoted is when I was a child, I acted like a child, but when I became an adult, I put those childish things away. Mm -hmm. you, you did childish things when you were younger and, and, and one childish thing, you know, not knowing, and it's okay, but if you're 30, you're 40 years old, you're still on the same thing that you were all at 20 years old. That's the problem. And, and be glad that, that you got a chance to experience the best of both worlds. You got a chance to experience a man who has some of your characteristics. Like, oh, he probably had everything except, okay, well, he doesn't sleep in Jesus. Then you got to experience, okay, a man who had pretty much everything, but this is what's lacking. Mm -hmm. You know, so you knew, okay, I have the best of both worlds. Not everybody gets that. You got some people who stay married to they, they meet somebody at 14 and they stay in a relationship with that same person for 90 years. And they're like, how in the world did y'all do that? When I met yeah. somebody at 14, like, like, it only lasted for uh, a semester <laughs> because they moved or, or, or I found out they liked somebody else. Okay, 
okay, they were too, too, like cute. They were, like, yeah. You know, like, I, yeah, and my mom, we were together, but we really weren't. So all I'm just trying to say is don't beat yourself up because niggas that have this name, because now you're able to inspire and uplift anybody out there who's having the same type of feelings that, you, that you're having. That person could be young. You never know, you could be talking to like a 16 year old could be listening to this right now. You never know. Right. I love that you said that because that's a love lesson in itself that you just never know. And I'm just I'm a teacher. So it's like I'm always like, well, what could I have done better? What? But sometimes there's nothing that you could have done better, like because there was nothing that he really did wrong. Um, he just wasn't what I needed. So that's the part where I was like, man, you know what I mean? Like if you meet, cause I went through a phase where I was just meeting like good quality dudes. And I was like, but I don't like them. Or it was just different things. And it, I was like, oh my gosh, like it was really frustrating. But you said you're not, ha you're not having that experience right now, or you haven't had that experience. Okay, I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. I think I could have or I could have met my soulmate. Could have sworn I met my soulmate, right? And this soulmate was my soulmate for maybe about two to three weeks. Okay. <laughs> I, I think that was, that was a trial period soulmate. That wasn't nobody real, okay? So let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you what happened, okay? Let's, let's step into Kendra's crazy world. So on Instagram, I realized um, that, you know, more support, men will support a woman faster than a woman will support a woman faster. And men and women will support men faster than men will Man, so I remember hearing God talk to me. It's so sad how that is, but I remember mm -hmm. hearing God talk to me. He told me, he said, Kendra, uh, show love uh, to men, you know, jump in their DMs, try to get them so you can get your following, not only your following up, but also your YouTube subscribers so it can go up. I said, okay, cool. So all I had to do was I had to follow God to do, and everything was working. Of course, every now and again, I'll have men try to say, hey, so uh, you want to talk? I'm like, bro, like, aren't you married? Uh, anyway, that's what I was saying. Uh, I think you married men out there. Come on, now have some respect. I mean, this, this is how I feel about it. If you're, I, 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 cheating is terrible. It's, it's it is terrible. It, it, it's like bestiality. It's just, just disgusting. Okay, but if you're going to cheat, can you at least archive the photos? Why is that every picture of you and your own lady? You don't think that we're not going to look? Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway. Mm -hmm. Anyway. <laughs> Yes, God. God, yes. You know, 
I thought I heard the angel. No way, I thought I heard the angel at the time, right? So uh, what ended up happening was uh, literally just, he actually attended, like I host like a, a virtual Bible study where it's like, you know, I, I, I ordained myself. I'm the first ordained, I'm ordained minister. So on Tuesday, I host a Bible study. But honey, oh like, my goodness. Know, rooting for him. I'm so sad. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to say nothing. He says, hey, uh, it's going to be seen. That's what's going to happen. 
Oh my God. <laughs> Not the dollar on the cash app. Of all people, he asked you. Oh my God. <laughs> And if you need to send a cash app request, then that would be a negative. So, <laughs> what's your cash app? What's your cash app, girl? Money sign Kendra Crumpton, spelled with an E. K E. Is the argument. Oh my God! What's up? Saving up for my wedding with Jason Taylor, aka the gang. Man, listen, I know you're out there listening. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. So we need them to stick with this uh, for the love lesson. And then we can also get to your, um, the question that you had to. Okay. So you have made it to the last segment of the show where you're going to get your love lesson. But before we get into the love lesson, um, Kendra, I know you earlier, you said something about a question it wasn't completely related, but I love questions. So um, let's go ahead and talk about that before we give them the love lesson. All right, cool, cool. So uh, it's not even a question. It's like a common question in a way, and I just want everybody to hear me out, okay? Because I know, look, some of y'all are doing this for free. All right, we're going to talk about prostitutes. All right, no, I'm not prostituting that I think. Uh, but let me say this, okay? So let me say what happened. There was... Um, uh, Again, like I said, I, I reach out to a lot of different men, and, you know, some of these men, I don't, you know, some of them, they're not going to put their family online. Some of them will. Some of their pages are private. They just call them and have conversations with them or whatever. And I often post my uh, uh, pictures of my feet. Uh, <laughs> with my copy, let them know, hey, listen, my, my, my toes, they, they love me out here, okay? Anyway, oh my God. You know, I sell these pictures as well. I sell these pictures for the Lolo. Yeah, they guys, they, they buy pictures from me. I'm like, what? what? Anyway, uh, yeah, those are my favorite account. Thank y'all. Anyway, back to the <laughs> So, there was uh, this one gentleman. You know, I shared a brief with him for about a week and a half, maybe two weeks. And so, uh, he seemed pretty cool. Um, and he said this morning, he said, hey, I can, I, can I rub your feet? And I kept thinking to myself, I was like, you know what, Kendra? You have had your feet rubbed, your feet sucked, you know, for free. Mm -hmm. Why not start making these people pay for it? Right? <laughs> so this is how I do it. This is how I go. I need to get to know a person extremely well. What does that mean? We're having constant communication, okay? Not we talk on day one and I don't hear back from until day 600. No, we're consistently talking, okay? Just like how you and your husband, y'all met, and then mm -hmm. by day 90, Y'all, y'all already married. Y'all were consistently talking. Yeah. Okay. A lot of, Every a lot day. of people I've dealt with over the years, uh, I knew them very well. Maybe I can't think of one person uh, right now that I didn't know that well. And I said, okay, we can do it. Before the mic, there was nobody. So my thing is, look, I'm, I'm knowing everything about you. And after a couple months, I said, you know what? Yeah, come meet me at Piedmont Park or, you know, somewhere. But anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Started hanging out. I knew something was kind of awkward to do 
do because he was really trying to apply pressure, extreme, too hard pressure. Hey, Kendra, can we go here? Hey, can we go there? Let's go out of, go out of town. Sir, sir, I just mentioned hmm. what to say. Why are you already trying to take me to Savannah? What the, what the hell is wrong with you? Right? Yeah. All right. to the topic because say this guy could he would be considered he might be considered high value to some because maybe he does have maybe he is a good looking got status he got all of that um he got money but what he doesn't have is character so a lot of these men are just not high quality men they're you know they just may appear to be because they seem to have everything together. But at the end of the day, if you are not a man of your word, then are you really a good man? You know what I mean? So so I think when it comes to guys cheating, I mean, that's a whole different topic as far as the cheating is concerned. But the type of guys that cheat like that, that is on topic because you want somebody that is actually going to keep and honor their commitments, you know? So with, yeah, I mean, it is. Um, but in relationship 
to um, just what I thought about the story, one of the things that I learned when when I was dating is like very early on, and I had guys do this to me, what is your status? Like, are you single? And it like it sounded weird at first because it, it kind of sounded like, well, obviously I'm single or I'm, but then um, people would they would ask me the same question. Are you single? Because they would run into so many people that would have all these situations and they were like getting tired of it. guys was getting tired of it, too. So we are not like females. We're not alone in that. Like females do that same thing to guys too. They'll be married or they'll have a boyfriend or they have whatever going on and they won't share that. So that's just a character thing. Like people, I mean, it was a uh, big ups to do that. He actually even mentioned it because some people won't say anything about it. They'll just like, you'll be dating them for, you know, down the line and you would never even know because they don't see themselves as married anymore because maybe they have a situation when it comes to their wife. But really when it comes to wives, because I have been married before and I'm not, I know how I was. I don't know how everybody else is, but the way I was, as long as we were married, I always felt like I could pull him back in if I needed to. It was like a string if I wanted to that I could pull him back in. So when you're actually divorced, you know, like it's going to be a process <laughs> for you to do that. But when you're already married, it's a lot easier to just kind of grab him when you want him type thing. So I personally didn't do the married thing for, you know, of course, your spiritual reasons, but then also because of that, like even practically speaking like i don't want anybody to be able to just snatch you real up real quick <laughs> and i'm all falling in love with you but i you know you don't really have a whole lot on the like it's just not wise to compete with the wife but that being said um back to what we were talking about earlier what i learned um for that from that experience about like actually dating guys that were considered like high value, um, that it was more important for me to have the qualities that I needed and versus the qualities that meet societal expectations. So even though every, like it would look good on the outside, but the inside the relationship, I was suffering. Like, I didn't want that either. I didn't want like a loveless marriage. So that, that kind of wraps it up for me was there anything that you, um, any, cause you said something when you were talking to me that I felt like was a love lesson worth repeating. I don't know if you remember it though, when I was but, telling you. Uh, I, I believe it was like, you know, your story could help somebody who is a lot younger than you. Um, yeah. You, you know, like that's your podcast here to help. Like you never know. Right. You never know like what you go through. Um, don't ever feel bad about what you go through. So even if you were the, the type of female where you're like, no, he has to be high value. And then you change um, because of something, you know, I was that way. Or maybe you didn't have those standards because I run into people like that, too, where they don't have their their standards aren't high enough, you know. And you you get into situations you feel bad, like, how could I be so stupid? Like, I should have had higher standards or whatever. So I love that, you know, lesson in that, you know, everything happens for a reason, basically. And now I'm sharing all those stories of things that I've gone through. And I'm like, oh, wow, why did I do that? And I did beat myself up in the moment. Like now, not so much. I still re I'm just reflecting on it. But I used to call my friends and be like, girl, you know, so <laughs> um, now I'm just sharing it with you all. But um, it was definitely a fun time with, you know, of, of getting to know different people and just learning more about myself. And it was really fun talking to you, too, because you are hilarious. So where can people find you? Yes. You can find me on Instagram, idolize.com. You can find me on YouTube, Kendra Crump, K Y N D R A C R U M P. And then if all else fails, find me on the corner, you know? Yeah. 
The Cash App so story is have, hilarious. You know, so again, I, I got plenty of stories, so I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to another love lesson. I am so happy and so grateful that you have taken the time out of your day to listen to the entire podcast. So I wanted to take some time and just tell you some projects that I'm working on because I definitely think that if you're interested in this content, you could benefit from the projects that I'm working on. So for one, the Love Lessons series, um, actually, it came from me just wanting to share my experiences um, in the dating world as being single, and then it just grew into so much more. And I also wanted to write a book about it. So um, that is one of the projects that I'm working on. The book actually has changed and evolved into so much more. So it has taken me longer to um, finish that project, but that is the project that I'm working on. So that's what this Love Lessons series uh, contributes to. And I've also, if you want to see um, some of my other work with this series and preparing for the book, then you can go to my YouTube channel and my YouTube channel, you can find me under um, Detra Hester. And if you just uh, type that in, you can find it pretty easily. Um, it's also in my Instagram. Um, I believe that I put that link in my Instagram profile at Maureen You Coach. And another thing that you might want to check out. If you are in that process of transformation, I do have a beauty channel, ladies. So I love trying out new looks. So when I was single, um, I really was focused on how could I become better? So how could I upgrade myself, my look? And um, also, how can I become more beautiful? And of course, you know, smarter and healthier and all of that too. But I developed a beauty channel. So my beauty channel is D Destiny Beauty. So at D Destiny Beauty on Instagram. And you'll see, uh, I will talk about different uh, makeup brands that I try. Um, and sometimes I'll do a hairstyle, but most of the time it's um, a lot of different makeup. Lately, it's been a lot of makeup um that I've been trying but in the past I also share different hairstyles as well um, because we can always level up our look so that might be something that you want to check out and then um, also on my Instagram and uh, my YouTube channel I do a uh, transformation series as well so I've gone back to focusing more on love lessons but I do a transformation series so if you want to check out my transformation series on YouTube then that is there and I encourage you to subscribe to uh, my YouTube channel so if you are a woman of faith um, or you enjoy beauty tips and you enjoy listening to content about relationships then you have found your girl so um all that being said the last but not least if you have not downloaded your free ebook um that is at more in you coaching Com. That one, it really talks about how to just get over it. So it's called There's More in You, but um, a lot of the material in there just kind of talks about how you can move on. Um, so if you have been in a difficult relationship and you're ready to move on, you're ready to heal, you're ready to grow, then you definitely want to check out that free ebook. Now, after you have checked out all of my content, you know what I'm about. And you say, you know what, I like her and I think she can help me grow in my personal situation. She's been through some stuff that is similar to me or um, 
I just resonate with her message and I think she can really help me to grow, then you might want to try out one of my coaching programs. So um, one of my programs, transformation uh, programs, that one, you at least need to give that one 90 days. Um, If you just want some more of a a one-on-one coaching, then we definitely would need to um, have a, a coaching call breakthrough session where we just kind of talk about what's going on with you and where you need to break through. And that session is free. Um, so if you want to do that and I can tell you what I, what I can offer you, if you're a person that you just want prayer, so you don't necessarily, um, you're not ready for actual coaching program, but you do want to reach out to me because you you do feel like my message uh, resonates with you. I will be happy to pray with you. Um, if you want to actually, you know, for me to send a personalized prayer to you, I will be happy to do that. Just email me at moreinyoucoaching at gmail.com and I will be happy to respond um, with a personalized prayer for you. Um, because I know that everybody is not ready for coaching. Coaching is for people that are ready to go from one level to another level. So they're ready to heal, but they're also ready to move into action. And I do have the perfect program for people that are really ready to move into action on some plans that God has for their lives. So that being said, um, make sure that you reach out to me um, on my other social media platforms. And um, if you want to send me a message of how this um, particular love lesson resonated with you, I would love to hear from you. So like I always end every message is no matter what you're going through, no matter what you've been through, there's still more in you. Thanks again for listening.